The Lord be with you. Good morning to you and a very warm welcome wherever you're watching this service. It's Holy Communion recorded at St. James's Church in Durris today, the second Sunday before Lent. Again, you are most welcome to our service. And as we prepare to receive Holy Communion together as God's people, we prepare by saying, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us, and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. <clears throat> we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect of the Second Sunday Before Lent Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts from long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth when he had not yet made earth and fields, all the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him, like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 104, verses 25 to 37. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and white sea with its living things, too many to number creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that 
Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed out of the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Colossians. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. John, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I mentioned last Sunday in the service as we celebrated Candlemas, we were looking forward to last Tuesday to see what the groundhog might say. And judging by the very stormy, wet, cloudy, windy weather at the beginning of last week, I think we can firmly say that spring is on its way. The Sundays before Lent are the beginning of what we call in the church ordinary time or green time, so hence the green colour of these robes. And also the focus as we 
begin to look towards Lent and Passiontide and Holy Week, the focus today is on creation. And as I pondered these readings, I was brought back many years ago to our first adventure with Christian aid. And how it was that Andrew Coleman, who came to our parish to preach here at the church and then to talk to the children about the work of Christian aid in Haiti. And at that time he was advocating for the farmers in Haiti and in particular the dairy farmers and how terribly impoverished they were and we were trying to help them to set up a rudimentary, a simple dairy industry. And it was beautifully resonant because one of my own colleagues here in this parish, Canon McManway, was instrumental with local farmers in setting up the local creamery, the local co-op, to help farmers to use milk to go on to produce other products, butter, cream products, cheese products, etc. And now if we look at our own country and our export market, we have moved on and evolved from those simple days into a thriving dairy industry. So this is what we were trying to do with the people of Haiti, help them in a very simple way to start that process. And Andrew was telling us one of the things about Haiti and in particular the poverty there, the means of cookery for the people was charcoal. And of course, as we know, charcoal comes from trees that are heated up to a very high temperature and then charcoal is made in that process. But the real problem for Haiti was that there was 99% deforestation. So in other words, there were 1% of trees left on that island. And there lies in, of course, the problem. If we think of our picture or the classic postcard of somebody washed up on a desert island, it's always sand and one tree. And if you wanted to cook and you cut down the one tree, then what would you do for shade and shelter, apart from heat, of course, to heat a fire? So as we pondered the great difficulties that those farmers had in Haiti, one of the things we had to do was to help them with education too, and of course the wherewithal to be able to start planting trees and forest their country once again. And so the cutting down of the tree deprives you not only, of course, of your means of heat or charcoal, but also of all the other things associated with trees. And in our parish, we've always thought and reflected about the idea of the tree of life and how it was that all the birds of the air sheltered in its branches. We're mindful today as we ponder creation, the tree of life planted in the middle of it. And so if you cut down the tree, the shade and the shelter is gone. There are no places for the birds of the air to nurture and rest. As we think of our own planet in these challenging times, we're grateful to the young people of this world for bringing global warming to our attention. The difficulty we all face is compounded when it becomes their difficulty. Our journey has been long on this planet. Theirs is only beginning. And so for all of us, the task of dealing with climate issues and doing all that we can to help to save our planet is a really important thing, the top of the agenda. Because... As I've already said, if we cut it down, then there is no place to shelter. Of course, we realise that an awful lot of the deforestation taking place in so many parts of the world is to do with poverty. Poverty on the one hand and greed on the other. The greed of the Western world and the poverty of the developing world. And so as we begin our journey in green time, may we be reminded of the love of God for us in creation, 
The tree of life, the tree of love was planted there to feed all of us, not just some of us. To nurture all of humankind and all the animals and all the plants and all the fish. And if only some corner the market and hoard it for themselves, then everybody else will be deprived. And the degree of deprivation in the world is the issue that Christian Aid pointed out to us and indeed they point out to so many other people. We are called to love our neighbour as ourselves. And in these times, it isn't easy. Yes, of course, we acknowledge that. Most recently in our community... We have seen many deaths in a local nursing home called Deer Park and the struggles of the frontline workers there to deal with the grief of their friends, not patients, but residents, those for whom Deer Park is a home. And also the wonderful staff in Bantry Hospital and so many other care facilities in our local community. So if you have a moment, why not drop a note to the staff in those places and say how much you value the work they are doing. A simple thing for all of us to do to show that we care, that we love. We don't have to leave our homes because, of course, another frontline worker that we often forget in all of this is our wonderful postman, postal service. And, of course, now our post person will collect our post as well as deliver it. And so on our journey, our journey through the Lord's creation, surrounded as we are so many signs and wonderful symbols of beauty and majesty, may we be enabled through his grace to play our part so that we would thrive and flourish and all of us would thrive and flourish. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. prayers of God's people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith. Lord of your people, strengthen your church in all the world. Renew the life of this diocese. Bless Paul, our Bishop, and build us up in faith and love. Lord of creation, look with favour on the world you have made. Guide the nations in the ways of justice and of peace, and bless our President and all in authority. Lord of our relationships, comfort and sustain the communities in which we live and work, and help us to love our neighbours as ourselves. Enable us to serve our families and friends and to love one another as you love us. Bless all those who are working so hard to protect us while working on the front line. Lord of all healing, relieve and protect all those who are sick or suffering. Be with those who have any special need, and in particular, we remember those who are suffering from COVID-19 and those who have been bereaved as a result. We remember also all those who are and deliver all who know danger, violence or oppression. Lord of Eternity, bind us together by your Holy Spirit in communion 
with all who, having confessed the faith, have died in the peace of Christ, that we may entrust ourselves and one another and our whole life to you, Lord God, and come with all your saints to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Blessed be God who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Draw us from hatred to love and make the frailty of our praise a dwelling place for your glory. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your love and mercy you have given us this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of humble hands. May it become for us the body of Christ. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your love and mercy you have given us this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of humble hands. May it become for us the blood of Christ. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, at all times and in all places, it is right for us to give you thanks and praise. Therefore, with all your people, with angels and archangels, and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted that in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death, we celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, Grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy church 
and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. God, our Creator, by your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Thank you for watching this service this morning and for joining us in Holy Communion. We pray that, as the post-communion prayer says, the tree of life will be firmly at the heart of your life and your journey of faith and the bread of life will nurture, support, and sustain you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.